Hello, my name is Mr. Philby. Please join me as we play possibly the most relaxing mech fighting game ever made for the PlayStation 2. Yes, it's. Get ready for Steambot Chronicles! A game that crucially does not actually feature steam powered robots. I hope you enjoy it! Steambot Chronicles! Developed by IRAM Software Engineering and given a lovely localization by Atlas USA. Are you interested in the band? Steambot Chronicles! Here on the start menu, we've got three options available to us. A relaxing non linear adventure. Steambot Chronicles! Well, let's start with the tutorial, shall we? You do not actually have to play this tutorial to play the game. There is, however, a prize for completing it. It also contains a vital plot information. Why say vital? Hey, Captain! Look what I found! These punks was hiding in the cargo deck. What should we do? How about we throw him into the sea? No, don't. Trying to ride for free, huh? Then I assume that you're willing to accept the consequences? Don't worry, you have no idea what's going on. You're not really supposed to at this point. Huh, is that so? Alright, I'm going to teach you how to pilot a Trotmobile. If you prove useful, then you'll be the SS Juniper Berry's newest crew members. If not, at least the fish will get a decent meal. Please don't drown these Miguel, children. prepare the Trotmobile. Uh, but Captain... The dire consequences of stowing away on a pirate ship are, of course, driving lessons and the prospect of employment. And with that meaningful exchange of jewellery completed, we can move on to the tutorial proper! The tutorial is split into five sections. We can complete the first four in whatever order we choose, and then the fifth one, one lock. Completing the fifth one will give us our wonderful prize. As the old adage goes, before we can run, we must learn to control the camera. I'm going to have a little bit of a gripe at this game right now in the first video. The camera controls are inverted. I don't like it that way and there is no option to change it. The sort of thing that should not have been acceptable in 2006. Thankfully the uh, first person view camera is not inverted. It controls how I like it. However, I'm pretty sure that the uh, difference between the first person camera and the third person camera behavior will result in me turning it the wrong way quite a lot. I'm going to apologize in advance for my terribleness at camera control. With the first section of the tutorial finished, we can move on to a part two. Control Basics. In this part, we get to uh, actually uh, move a trot wheel around and learn how to do that. The mech controls in this game can best be summed up as Katamari Damacy. We use both analog sticks in tandem to maneuver ourselves around. It's a little bit clumsy, but we can get used to it. Here we have a Captain Kibulet's personalized tropmobile. The Great Sailing. Over here we have another tropmobile. Apparently used for self-defense against nasty pirates. Yes, it turns out Captain What's Her Face is not in fact a pirate herself, despite dressing like one and even having a parrot on her shoulder. Of 
while this tutorial may seem fairly linear and simple, we do actually have quite a lot of freedom afforded to us. We can walk around this whole area wherever we want. Although going up those stairs or going too far will send us out of bounds and a result in us being put back. Still was a fairer area to explore and if we wanted to go and pick up a tree and throw it around it, the game would even put up the uh, little uh, tutorial boxes for doing that even though that's not even covered until the next section of the tutorial. It's a nice touch. You're not told off, you're in fact complimented on already knowing how to do that. Well done you. Ah, the jump and the dash, two very useful moves. Before we uh, go and show them off, except for the jump which I just did, let's have a look. Can we walk to this uh, lighthouse we saw in the intro? The answer is... No, we're not allowed to, unfortunately. Well, screw that. Let's go jump in the sea. Well, that may seem fairly pointless, I did that just to show off the attention to detail in this game. They modelled and animated a crane for taking you out of the water, just in case you were stupid enough to launch yourself off the edge of the head. They didn't put an invisible wall in, they didn't just make you reappear, they didn't fail the tutorial for you doing that. They animated a crane. Actually, it's quite difficult to uh, dash forwards without actually activating the dash attack. Letting go of the analog sticks and pressing the dash button moves you forward without doing it, which makes you makes you move a bit faster, I believe. On to part three now. Let's learn how to attack and defend ourselves. Trompeville combat is the real meat of this game, really. The main gameplay portion of it, at any rate. Some of our most challenging encounters in the game will be up against Trompevilles in various states. I believe every single enemy Trompeville in the game that isn't a special one, isn't a modified one can in fact be made yourself if you find the parts. Later in the game we'll be able to accurately recreate Captain What's Her Face's great sailing here, complete with boat hull and outboard motor. There we were learning how to guard, a useful ability that I basically never use on account of not being in the way of attacks is much more effective than guarding against them. Here we learn how to lock on. Locking on is most useful for ranged attacks and also because it comes up with a little health bar telling you how much energy your enemy has left. So it comes up with a name most of the time, not in this case. Your combat abilities in this game are tied to what sort of arms you equip. At the moment we have a strap arm and a normal arm, two uh, melee weapons. Well, they're melee weapons in that they can't do anything else. Not really dedicated melee weapons. They just happen to be able to hit things. Picking up enemies is a actually fairly effective way of defeating them. Unfortunately, most Trompeville operators are canny enough to defend themselves against such tactics by either picking you up before
before you get a chance to, or slipping out of your grasp and attacking you from behind. Not all of them though, so we'll be using that quite a lot.